Welcome to the Find My Catalyst podcast. We all have problems we're looking to solve, and we know there are solutions out there, but we struggle with this. How do we find the solution? Where does the nudge come from to help us take the next step and start solving tough problems? The intention of this podcast is to help you find your catalyst and take the next step. I'm your host, Jody Mayberry, and I'm here with the founder of Catalyst Sale, Mike Simmons. Hello, Mike. Hey, Jody. How are you? I'm great. I just got back from a wonderful trip to Orlando. Oh, come on. Let's not lie to people. We recorded this live in Orlando, and now we're doing it again. So welcome back. It's good. The first time we recorded this, we recorded it live in front of a studio audience. Not really in a studio. It was the lobby. But here we are again. You had a heck of a trip back. It took you a little bit wa- a little bit longer to get back than you originally planned. Oh, my goodness. It, it sure did. But let's talk about that lobby first. That was kind of cool. We had people from the event we were at saw we were recording in the lobby, and then they just hung out and watched. And we put on a show for them, even though the episode didn't get recorded due to a technical difficulty, but we got some good photos. And people got to listen to us record a show. And it was like a bonus show because it was just for those people. And that's the beauty of it. It was really just for the, not originally planned, but now it is just for those people. Yes. So that was nice. We had, we gather, Mike and I were together in Orlando for a creating magic mastermind with Lee Cockrell. And then my trip home was very much delayed by four hours. And then uh, I got bumped out of my seat due to another technical difficulty. And then I felt the airline didn't handle it real well. So I had a couple conversations with them. Well, here we are. So, and like we do, I mean, most times that we have a chance to be together in the same place, we kind of reflect on that experience of being together in the same place and the value of seeing people and meeting people in person and both meet people that you've met a number of times before and you just rekindle relationships and then others where you meet them for the first time. And some of those that you meet for the first time in person, you've spoken to for a while and it feels like you've known them. So pretty powerful. It's powerful to get together. It's important to get together. And one of the primary reasons why I invest in the mastermind each time that they take place or at least set to my plan is to participate in each of these going forward is because of the interaction, the engagement, the questions that come up that usually are related to the same kind of problems that I've either struggled with relative to the business or will struggle with relative to the business or struggle relative to you know personal stuff or family stuff. So really powerful. So it's good to uh, good to take time and reflect on things like this. So let's get to it. Well, this one was to me even more special because we hadn't done it in two years. COVID had kept us away from each other. We finally felt it was the appropriate time and everyone felt safe enough. So we said, now's the time we got together. So Mike, this is your third one. So yep. let, let's start with that. You keep coming back. You hold the record or tied anyway, for the record of number of attendances at these events at three. So there's something that keeps bringing you back. What is that? Well, to you. No, wow. actually, it, it's it, what is it's you, it's, it's Lee, it's creating this space, it's kind of like creating a speed bump for myself in the business. Uh, back when I have you know, led teams in the past and when I was in a W two role as an individual contributor and as a uh, as a leader of large teams, we would have global sales kickoffs. We would have company kickoffs. We would have sales leadership retreats. We would have events where we would get together as a group, and that would always provide some time to reflect on the business, to start thinking about what's next in the business, to start putting plans in place. And I didn't realize how much I had missed that until I had a chance to participate in the first mastermind that I participated in back in, uh, I think it was 2018, and really got a lot out of not only being able to share some information with a group of people and get feedback and hear their questions and get outside of my own biases and blind spots, but just take the time to get away from things and think and reflect and write and start thinking about what's next. So that's why I, that's 
that's why I continue to participate and will continue to participate in. It's basically, it's my own, uh, my own retreat that you guys create you know, once a year or however you end up doing it. Now, if you end up doing it more than once a year, then I probably won't participate in each of those. But at least once a year, I'll participate maybe, uh, maybe once every, every six months if that ends up being the frequency. Well, I noticed you were active and everybody, anyone was talking, you were active. You were talking to people between sessions. You were talking in the hallways. You were hanging out with people in the lobby. You were busy the entire time. And this is people from all different industries across the country. What value does that bring to you to end up talking to people that are we had a physician, we had people from pharmaceuticals, we had people from education, a former Marvel artist, a guy who works at Text and Church. I mean, we had this broad range of people that were there. What do you get out of that? And it's the interaction with people. It's the engagement and conversation. Naturally curious in what people are working on. So I ask a lot of questions and it's it's cool to hear people share the things that they're they're working on. And then when they ask me questions, it, it feels good to share some of the stuff that I'm working on. And I think no matter, and I know Katie mentioned this at, at one point and a couple of others mentioned it, but you know, the challenges that we run into as business owners, as leaders inside organizations, as just people who lead ourselves or lead families is we tend to believe that we're the only ones at a given point in time that are dealing with an individual struggle. Yet, once we start talking about it with others, we realize you know, they've gone through it. They may say it in a different set of words or their specific experience might be slightly different, but the feelings they have, the struggles, the insecurities, the lack of confidence, the questioning, the fear, these are all things that everybody deals with. And part of the reason that's the case is we're all human beings. I mean, I don't know that you've had any sociopaths at the event. At least not that I've picked out in the conversation, but we all are participating because we want to get better and we can learn from experiences, diverse set of experiences that someone like Lee Cockrell has, or someone like Reggie Williams, who was a, who was a guest there at the event, or even you know, someone who rents fun in Miami and literally has trucks and blow up like bouncy houses and water slides and things that he delivers across the city of Miami to help people have amazing experiences when it comes to birthday parties or family get-togethers. And it's just this diverse set of experiences where you realize, hey, many times we all just overthink things. We tend to overcomplicate stuff and we forget the importance of just getting out there and doing the work, taking each of those individual steps. And you know, for those who've listened to the podcast long enough, you know how important the do the work phrase is to me, just get out there and do the work. Yet it's good to have reminders from a lot of other people how important that is. There were a couple of good things I pulled from this. Usually there's one big statement that Lee makes that I that in the moment, the way he said it really has an impact. And one time it was on you when when he just said, what does that mean? And it completely yeah. changed the way you look at things. It changed the way I talk about some things. This time he told somebody, she was going to ask a question. She gave a lot of background information on why she was going to ask this question. And Lee said, don't justify, just be. Yeah, that was pretty powerful. And I think that was Katie again. And you'll see Katie Curran's you know, periodically in, in my LinkedIn feed as she shares more stuff out there and and as we've connected. And I think Katie's a really interesting person to follow. And yeah, that there tends to be a couple of those statements that come up. And that was definitely one of them at this event. All right. So we're we're gonna talk about this other piece that was kind of outside the event, but part of the event. So I've got to bring up miniature golf. Mike might have talk try to talk about miniature golf too much here, but we're, I've already I've already moved on, Jody. But, like the the, the the event when did the event take place, wasn't it? Just like all right, don't, you're getting so in the way here, Mike. Keep, keep getting in ahead. the way. So we're playing miniature golf, and there's somebody who's doing really well, winning for the first five holes, couple holes in one. I mean, really doing well. And she took a bad shot on hole six, and I leaned over to Mike and I said, "She's gonna fall apart right here." 
And Mike's like, well, what do you mean? I was like, she's going to do bad. She's not used to being in the lead. And sure enough, she did. She didn't do well the rest of the game. And it's because when people aren't used to being in the lead, then they tell themselves certain things that they start to believe. Because she messed up. She's like, oh, I knew it. I'm, I'm not very good. What, Whatever. And I, I actually took a huge business lesson from that. And then talking to Mike afterwards, learned something about myself that could be applied to business. Because I do really well. I shoot, give or take, par on miniature golf course. But I rarely get a hole in one. Very rarely does it happen. And it's because I always assume if I go for two, the other person will eventually mess up and I'll win. So all I have to do is take my first shot in a manner that will set me up for shot number two. And I never go for the hole. And Mike was saying, hey, that's a mindset challenge. And I'm like, no, it's not. I do really well. And he's like, then why don't you get hole in one? I'm like, oh, maybe it is a mindset thing. So talk about that, Mike. I know it's miniature golf and it's not the event we were there for, but I actually learned a lot from that. Yeah, pretty powerful. I mean, we get ourselves into situations where, and it becomes this vicious, vicious downward spiral where you know, one of the things we're talking about a little bit is that we all have these insecurities. And whether we say them out loud, whether we admit them to others, or we just keep them bottled up inside, we have them. And they'll, they end up rearing their ugly head, usually at the most inopportune times. And yeah, there are a number of things that will come up. And this is one of the pieces that came out of the mastermind too, is the importance of identifying the patterns that are precede these areas where the insecurities start to come up. Anyhow, one of the challenges we run into is, let's say we ha- have a bad shot and that bad shot could be on the golf course or could be on the mini golf course, but or it could be in business. We just have a, we make a mistake. We put our, our foot in our mouth in the type of question we ask or the way that we're working through something. And then all of a sudden that negative experience reinforces our own internal beliefs that we're not worthy, that we're not justified, that we're an imposter, that we're, we shouldn't be in this place where we are. And then before you know it, that mindset starts to creep into the work that you're doing and you create this level of self-doubt and you start to limit your capabilities as a a high-performing individual out there. Again, whether you're on the mini golf course or you're on a big golf course, it's still the same thing. And, And one of the things Jody and I talked about after that is really the, in addition to the the mindset of taking dead aim, which is a Harvey Pennock thing in his little red book, Golf, Take Dead Aim. There's this view of, I can take aim and go for the hole, play in the moment, take care of that one shot, and then play the next shot. Because once I've taken the shot, there's nothing I can do about it. Whether I succeeded or I failed, there's nothing I can do about that shot. So I then go and move on to the next one. And if I'm able to play in the moment, I'm not going to let that last shot beat me. And this is one of the things one of the themes you'll hear over the course of the years will continue to draw back on references to golf because golf is a game of life. As Bob, I think Bob Rotella said that in one of his books, golf is a game of life. And you know, golf is not a game of perfect and life is not a game of perfect. It's another part of that in one of the books that he wrote. So there's this mindset of, look, I'm going to take dead aim. I'm going to go for the hole in one put myself in the best position to be successful because a lot of times there's ways to get a hole in one when you're playing mini golf and then you just deal with the next shot there. There's also when you make mistakes, when you come up short, and I did this when Jody and I were playing, I tried to go for a hole in one, didn't get to the top of the hill and the ball rolled back out. And then I had to take a penalty stroke because I had to get pull the ball out of the, out of the woods. When you miss that shot, then it's about recovery and about taking the next shot and being present for that next shot. Now that whole, I think that was the second day we played, I ended up uh, getting a four and Jody got a two on that hole. So his philosophy, his approach, his strategy of going for two worked out because he ended up making up two strokes there. But in the end, he didn't win the game. I noticed you take a long, dramatic pause right there at the end of that sentence. I was finished with my point. I figured you might pick it up. (laughs) Well, I've got nothing to pick up there. But what... What I take from that and our experience playing is when you do mess up and you worry about that last shot and the position it put it, it, that shot doesn't even exist anymore. You took it, it's over. Now you've got the shot right in front of you. 
And yes, we're talking mini golf, but I mean, how many of us struggle from dealing with how we messed up yesterday or something we did 10 days ago? And it takes us to the Admiral Payne quote, Lee's father-in-law, do your best and forgive yourself. And too often we get hung up on that last shot that it didn't go right, or we didn't, we didn't do it right. And you know, I know that there are some people out there, especially those who play golf, who will say, well, you know, you're not doing the game justice. And I'm, I'm not, I mean, in mini golf, yes, you can plan and on a, on a larger golf course, you have to plan. And this is where, you know, designing backward and executing forward is so important. If I've got a 500 yard par five and my best shot is a hundred yards in with a 50 degree wedge, then I want to make sure that I've got a hundred yard approach into the hole. So now I've got 400 yards from the tee box that I've got to make up. If I've got, if I hit my four iron well, 200 yards, I can go two, 400, two four irons into that position and put myself in the best position to make the approach shot. That's the planning, but then you've got to take the shot. And once you've taken the shot, then you have to be okay with doing your best and forgiving yourself. Sometimes you miss. And you know, one of these days I won't miss as often as I do. And I'll break 80. That's a goal of mine this year. But there's a so there's still a planning part of it. Don't lose sight of that. You plan, you design backward, you execute forward. Once you take that shot, you just move on to the next one. So yeah, really good. Yeah, there's so many good lessons that you can learn on the golf course. Again, mini golf or on one of those uh, one of those regular golf courses. Maybe in the future we can record an episode on the miniature golf course while we're playing. Although then we'd have to hear all your curse words. You would, yeah, you would. There's definitely some negative self talk that happens periodically with me when it comes to putting, which it happens to be right now the weakest part of my game, but will be the strongest part of my game by the time we wrap up this year. Uh, I'm definitely putting in the work. All right. As we wrap it up, I want to say, isn't it interesting though? We've spent half an episode talking about what we learned in Orlando, but a lot of that took place outside of the event. Yeah, the event was great. We could probably go on another 30 minutes about it, but it's these lessons and these interactions that we got outside of the event just being together because, gosh, Mike, after two years of not seeing people, for the most part, it was wonderful to be back together. It really was. And you know, I think they... So you have an event like that, which ends up being a catalyst to being able to create these stories and, and create those learning experiences, right? So if it wasn't for the event, if it wasn't for the draw that you and Lee have, we wouldn't have the group of professionals that were in the room together who were engaging with each other and then wouldn't have that opportunity to go to lunch with each other, or go out and play mini golf or take a ride on the, uh, on the Icon Park wheel. And it was all really good. I've got a number of items that I, you know, one of the cool things about doing this again is I've had a chance to reflect on my notes and look at a couple of pages of notes that I that I took. And when I take notes, I I use colors intentionally. Red are key takeaways, things that I want to remember so that my attention gets drawn toward it. Black is you know, just my traditional ink, and blue ends up being something that might be a follow up question or something I want to go a bit deeper into. So red key takeaways, blue. Let's follow up and do more work related to it. Black, just general text. And I had a couple of a uh, couple of things in red. One of them was forget about moving fast. And I think too often we fall into this trap of wanting to move really, really fast. And Jody shared the story, which I have special ops. We'll talk about it. This comes from his training as a park ranger. But slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. Instead. We fall into the trap of we want to move really quick and we want to move really fast because we need to get to wherever it is that we're going. And if we go too fast, we miss all of the individual points, all of the details that might have actually helped us be more effective at the work we're doing, be more productive in the way that we approach our work. So forget about moving fast. And that was, uh, that was one of the points that came up. The follow-up that I wrote on there is the importance of speed to impact. So forget about moving fast. Let's focus on speed to impact. That was one that jumped out. I've got a couple of other ones, Jody, unless you've got something you want to add to that one. 
Well, I'll add just a little bit that two things that came up, and these perhaps are kind of related, is the idea of moving fast when, why do you need to? And the second was growth for the sake of growing because there's opportunity to grow. Is that the right choice? And I think they're kind of together. Are you going fast because it feels like you should? Are you growing because it feels like you should? Maybe they're the right option, but are they really? And you, you need to think about that. It's important to think. It's important to think. And I, I think another one of those areas where it's important to think is you talk about things like value. So when value comes up, are we looking at it from a, an internal or an external view? Like, how are we determining this value? And you know, it's really cool to fall into your own echo chamber and get into the, draw a couple of things up on a whiteboard and be really excited about the thing that you're going to deliver that delivers speed to impact, focused on speed to impact. And you might think it's really valuable internally and everybody else around the organization might think it's really valuable, but you forget to go out and ask customers and get some feedback from them around what is valuable. How did they measure value? What is it that they are thinking about that contributes to that part of the value equation? Because what you might find is the thing that they're valuing might be much bigger than the thing that you value. There are a number of people that are in that room as we're in there who the value might be just spending some time with Lee as an example. That's the draw. That's where they get the value. The Knowing that they're going to be in a room for a day and a half with Lee and be able to interact directly. There are others who will look at the value as the interaction that they can have with everybody else that's in the room. And there are other people who look at the value as, hey, this creates a specific set of space that I'm not going to miss. And I'm going to block out of my calendar and I'm not going to respond to email and I'm going to engage in conversation. and I'm going to be busy, like Jody had said, busy because I'm present and I'm engaged. So everybody will have their own perception of value. What we've got to ask ourselves as business owners, as leaders inside organizations is, are we looking at value from a internal perspective and how we would define it? Or are we looking at it through an external lens and how do we balance each of those? Yeah, I like that. Even this event, Lee and I have to look at what do we think is valuable versus what do the 15 people who are there think are valuable? And where do they all align? Because everybody's going to come there looking for something a little bit different. Those circles have to overlap somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's hard when you're working with so many different people. So, you know, and this is why you know, for me, things like scripts don't work when it comes to sales. You're working with so many different people who have so many different perceptions, who have so many other things that how can you actually go through and draw, write up a script that does every single one of those things with the voice of the person who needs to deliver it? What if you took an approach where you said, look, let's have some general guiding principles around what, or you know, guiding principles and operating principles, general principles around what it is that we're trying to deliver and how we deliver that and where the impact is, and then give people the freedom to be themselves rather than say, hey, this is how that operation has to happen. And I think if we as human beings that are out there doing all of this stuff can ask more questions, we will overcome a number of our biases and blind spots when it comes to doing a lot of the things that we're talking about, whether it's value or it's overcoming insecurity or it's accelerating speed to impact, ask more questions and then listen. Like It's one thing to ask the question. It's a completely different thing to actually ask a question and then sit back and listen and then think about that and then maybe ask the follow-up question because a lot of times you can go a bit deeper into the surface level information that comes out of the answer that is given in that first question. Yeah, there's a difference in asking a question so you can say the next thing or asking a question because you're curious and you care what the answer is. Absolutely. All right. Do you have anything else for us, Mike? I think this has come up. This has been an ongoing theme. A lot of people are familiar with the game plan, goal setting and execution, and being able to do so through clarity and focus. Clarity and focus were key themes for me in 2019, coming out of the second mastermind that I had an opportunity to participate in. And 
it actually turned into writing a pretty long blog post on clarity and focus and defining that. And we'll include a link to it. So uh, just wrap up with the importance of clarity, the importance of being purposeful and the importance of keeping things simple. If you aren't clear, if things aren't as simple as they can be, and you're not operating with a high level of purpose, ask yourself the question, should I be doing this work? And if you shouldn't be doing this work, give yourself the freedom to stop doing the work. And if you should be doing the work, move forward with reckless abandon. All right. I like it. Since Mike mentioned it, Mike, tell us where we can get the game plan. If you go to catalystcell.com forward slash game, you can uh, get the game plan. All right. Thank you, Mike. And thank you for listening to the Find My Catalyst podcast. Mm -hmm.